If you want to learn how to format your references in text and the reference list automatically using Zotero, then I'm going to show you exactly in this video how this is done. So let's dive right in and look at my screen and I'll show you everything from downloading the program to setting it up correctly and then to actually using it in Microsoft Word. Uh, whether you're on a Windows or a Mac user, this will work for both of you. All right, so I'm on Zotro main site, right? And you know, you can create an account and log in, which I think is really useful because you can sync um, your data across different devices. Should you change your computer, lose your computer, whatever, log in somewhere else, um, all your library will be saved. So it's, it's a good idea to create an account and then you wanna download it here. Um, so it's available for Windows, Linux, iOS, and so on, right? Um, so when you go to download, you need to select the, the one for Windows. For me, it's automatically selected or Linux or whatever um, you're using, right? So that's one thing. And then the other thing that you need to download is the Chrome connector, right? Um, it also works for other browsers, so you can download it here, but you must install it here. And I'll show you in a second what this connector is and why you need it, right? But you need to download both. When you download the main program, it also downloads the extension for Microsoft Word, uh, which I'll show you in a second um, as well. Right, so once you've downloaded it, um, you can open it here, right? And one of the first things that I'd recommend you do is to create like different folders, right? Like this, because it just helps to keep things neat and clean, you know, and maybe it's like, <laughs> an obsession of mine, but I, like, I just like to keep things organized, right? Because it's easier for me to find stuff and, and so on. It just keeps my mind organized as well. So I'd create folders. It's super easy to do. Like you just add uh, a folder in here and, and it's fine, right? And, you know, and then you've got your, uh, all your work that you download, you've got it here, right? Now, how do you get it here? Because that's the, the first step. Well, let's go to, for example, Google Scholar, right? Or any, this will work with any database, right? So you don't have to use Google Scholar. You can use whatever, um, whatever you want, uh, really. And, you know, let's say you've, you've searched for something, right? We're just gonna search for myself, uh, just for the fun of it, and see what comes up, um, right? And like, you've got two options here. You found all these papers, and like, let's say you wanna download more than one, yeah, from, from this list that you found. Well, you can, you can see here the Zotro connector, Chrome connector that I've been talking about, right? And it's a folder because there are several um, downloadable studies in here. So you can click on the folder in here and then select which ones you wanna download, okay? And then, you know, you click on okay and Zotro will download it to the folder which is selected here. You can then, of course, move it across the folders, right? So that's one way if you wanna download more than one study, right? But like, let's say, you know, you're in the journal's website and you're actually browsing through a study. Well, um, what you've got to make sure is that this is a symbol of like, you can see it's like a little page in here, right? Um, so it's got to be like a symbol of a page and then you can download it to Zotro. If it's like, um, a book chapter, it will have a symbol of an open book like this one. Let's see if we can actually um, find it and see if we can download it so I can show you what it looks like. Right? So yeah, so it's a book chapter. So you can see it's just an open book. So it's pretty simple. If you find a book, it will look like a book and so on. Now, what you've got to be careful with is that, you know, if you're viewing like a website, um, so this is not a good example, but like, let's, I'll just open my website for the fun of it, right? So imagine like you're browsing through the internet and you found like, you know, an article, right? Um, that is useful, like maybe a report or whatever, like, and you're viewing it, right? Um, it's gonna show up, you know, in here as, as something like this, but this really isn't going to work very well. It's not going to give you the necessary information that you want. So you're really looking for like the symbols of the open book or the symbols of a paper, right? And that's how you download it. 
Once you've downloaded, like Zotero just pulls all this information automatically. Now, please remember that it's just a program, right? So it downloads the information that the internet gives it. If the information is wrong, it's going to download the wrong information, right? Well, usually what, what might happen from time to time, if we go back and we look at one of the studies in here, you know, for some reason, this just comes up as all caps, which isn't correct, but that's the information on the internet, right? And even if we go to that journal's website, it's, it's all caps for some strange reason, because that's how they formatted it in this uh, journal. But if you download it like this, it's gonna come up like this in your text, which is obviously not correct. And Zotero doesn't know that this isn't correct. It just downloads the information from the internet, right? So if that happens, you know, you wanna edit the title in here. But it's only going to happen maybe like 1% of the time, not more than that. All right, now what happens if you, like, if, if you cannot add it automatically, like I've shown you like this, um, you know, 99% of the time you can always add it like this automatically. But there might be like a small number of cases where you need to add it manually. So then you can do it here, right? You click on this plus sign and you select what you're adding, a book, a journal article, there is more in here, right? You can add all sorts of stuff, TV broadcast and stuff like this, right? Um, so if you, when you click on adding it, right, you, you can add all the necessary information um, in here um, as well, right? So I'm just gonna delete it. Okay, so that's the necessary first step. Like you need to download the papers that you're going to be using. Once you've got them in your Zotero library, uh, we can open Microsoft Word. It works with Google Docs, by the way, as well. I personally haven't used it with Google Docs, but it does work with Google Docs. So if you're using Google Docs, um, good news for you, right? And you will see that Zotero is here as well. It's just a new tab, right? And it, it, it's, this tab is automatically added to Word when you download the main Zotero program, right? So we, what we don't wanna do is add um, a citation, right? Um, so let's say if we say several studies have shown X, Y, Z, right? And then in here, we need references to back it up. Well, you can add edit citations, choose the citation style you wanna be using. Um, you can always change it, so don't worry, right? And yeah, let's, let's add some references. Right, we'll add three just for the fun of it. And you can see they've been added here. Now, when you want to create a reference list, right, uh, you can add edit bibliography just here. And all those works will be automatically added here, right? Now, let's say, you know, you wanna say something like, you know, um, right, and you wanna use the name of the author um, as the subject of the sentence. So then in brackets, we don't want to have the name of the author. We just want to have the year, right? So what we wanna do is click here and then click on omit author, right? And then click enter, enter, and you can see we just have the year in here, right? Now imagine like we wanna have a quote in here, right? Um, you wanna add a quote, right? So what we're gonna do is click on here, add edit citation, right? Click here on the citation and add page number and click enter, right? So that's, that's what you can do, pretty, pretty neat. Now what you can also do is like, imagine you're writing it and then like you've finished it and then you're submitting it to a journal and then you realize, oh, I need to change the referencing style. It's super easy. You just go to document preferences right, and just select whichever style you want, right? So let's just select Vancouver for the fun of it. And Zotro will automatically update everything as you can see here, right? Now, it's very rare, but it can happen that your referencing style, that the referencing style you have to use isn't here in this main library. Like 99% of the referencing style are here, but you can manage styles. So some journals try to be different just to, you know, 
to give us more work and they invade their own styles. Fortunately, Zotro being you know, an open source program, people create those styles within Zotro. So you can get additional styles, right? And you've got a whole list. Like, it's like crazy, like how many styles there are, right? You can even select it by field, right? Um, or you can just search if you know what the style is called, you can just search for it, right? But you can see like everything is here and then you could just download it into your library and then you're, and then you're good to go and the style will appear here and you can use it, right? So that's how Zotro works. Um, let me know if you, if you have any questions. One last thing that I also want to tell you is a cool new feature of Zotro, which is the PDF reader, right? So, you know, in the past, you know, those documents wouldn't be available anywhere. But if you download them and the PDF is viewable on the journal's website, then you can actually read it in Zotra. How cool is that, right? So you don't, you have a PDF reader and the reference management software all in one. You don't have to switch between programs. You know, it works as any PDF reader. You know, you can highlight things add notes and things like that. Uh, but it's pretty neat that it's all in the same place. If you want more personalized help and you want to work with me to help you to regularly publish research papers in top journals, then schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation. We're going to meet one-to-one -one and discuss what your specific problems are and what you'd like to achieve. And then I'll show you how you can get to those goals much, much faster and we'll outline a personalized plan for you. If you want to do that, then book this completely free one-to-one -one consultation and the link is right below this video.